on today's live open daily we're talking about the meta quest 3s the i guess true replacement for the quest 2 question mark we have a leak on the specs of the quest 3s to check out also meta is not the only company offering different versions of the current generation headset there are two other companies doing the same thing right now with two more on the way within the next year i'm your host live open mike we've known about a lighter version of the quest 3 since before the quest 3 launch we heard about this first in like spring of last year if you check out my youtube channel i did a whole video speculating on what that could look like at the time i guess that it would come without controllers because they were really pushing the mixed reality angle in hindsight i was pretty off base about that i thought meta was really going to push the mixed reality part and try to go full on mixed reality plus hand tracking, which ironically is what Apple did with the Apple Vision Pro. But it's looking like from the leaks we're going to talk about here in a minute that this new Quest 3S is going to come with controllers. As far as price point, we still don't really know what that looks like. But if they're trying to market this as like a go between between the Quest 2 and the Quest 3, price is going to be really important to that. We know that the Quest 3 has sold at least a million units. This is just being extrapolated from the data on the metagame first encounters. That's a mixed reality, basically a tech demo that you can only play on Quest 3. It's not available on Quest 2. There's a user on X named Just Davin who's been tracking the number of users who have gone through and played that game and it eclipsed a million on June 26, meaning that that game first encounter has been played on at least 1 million different Quest 3 headsets or at least 1 million different Quest 3 user accounts. Now with common game attrition, we're not going to assume that every single person who has a quest 3 played that game because that's just not reality even if it's like 90 percent 80 percent something like that no video game ever has a one-to-one -one attachment rate even the tech demos that may come with a headset or a gaming console it's rare to get every single person who owns a console to play even like the introductory thing sometimes they'll just get right to the game they wanted to play but then you compare that to the quest 2 and it still pales in comparison there's something like 20 million units of the quest 2 out there and over the course of the holiday season this past year, Quest 2 was outselling Quest 3, something like 6 or 7 to 1, and it was by far the best-selling headset on the market, beating Quest 3, PlayStation VR 2, and Pico 4. So there's still a lot of Quest 2s out there, and there's still a lot of people, even new Quest 2 users, who did not upgrade to Quest 3, and the primary sticking point has been price. Over the holiday season, Quest 2 was selling for like 250 bucks. that was half the price of the Quest 3. Now enter Quest 3S. Again, we've known about this for over a year. There's no shot that Meta released the Quest 3 and then in the course of the last nine months went, oh crap, uh, it's not selling as well the Quest 2. Okay, let's cobble together a headset real quick and make this happen. No, this is something that's been rumored for over a year. We've heard the name Project Ventura and like data mining from people like Luna on X, who Luna provided a lot of the leaks that we're going to talk about today. We've heard about this for a while. Now we're just starting to see it come to light. So it's always been in Meta's plan to release a downgraded version of the Quest 3. We just didn't know what the downgrades were going to be. And now if these leaks turn out to be true, which Luna's been pretty spot on on everything they've put out there, I think we now have a pretty good picture of what this looks like. Now specs and designs first surfaced back in March when a user on Reddit, a French user, said that they saw like a computer generated render on a Zoom call with a bunch of Meta executives. This might have been like a market research call or something like that. All these images were deleted off Reddit after that, most likely because they signed the NDA and pissed Meta off. But once you put something on the internet, it lives forever. So these pictures are still floating around. I'll put it up on the screen here. See the Quest 3S is listed at a resolution of 1832 by 1920 per eye at 20 PPD. The hard drive size for the Quest 3S is listed at 256 with a 128 model version available. Again, this is in French. So I'm just going off the numbers because I can't read what the French says. So that happened in March and then fast forward to May and Luna reported, I'm going to read straight from their tweet. I've seen multiple dev kits and spoken to several people familiar with the device. Here are all the things I've learned and feel comfortable sharing in a single infographic. Running through the spec sheet, uh, it's a Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2. That's the same chip that's in the Quest 3. A single flash switch LED at 1832 by 1920 per I, 20 PPD. Those are the same specs as the Quest 2. A 90 Hertz or 120 Hertz refresh rate. For now lenses with three position IPD IED adjustment. A Quest 2 style glasses spacer and then Quest 3 style touch plus controllers. Those are the ones without the rings. Four IR tracking cameras similar to the Quest 3 although they're in different positions. Two 4 megapixel RGB pass through cameras for color mixed reality and two IR illuminators for depth sensing. It's also said to support Quest 3 software features like automated space setup, inside out body tracking, and multimodal tracking. Multimodal is being able to use a controller in one hand and your hand being free to use hand tracking in the other. Suggesting the Quest 3S is going to use the same tracking algorithm as the Quest 3, where hand tracking and controller tracking are working side by side to get more accurate tracking for the headset. So the VR enthusiast crowd took a look at this and said, why would I buy this if I already have a Quest 3? And the answer is you probably shouldn't. This is not a headset for you. But if you look at the disparity between the number of people who still are using their Quest 2 because they cannot afford the Quest 3 at the increased price, 
or just felt good enough about the Quest 2 that they didn't need to upgrade, this is going to be something for them. If Meta gets this headset to market at a price point of $300, the original price point of the Quest 2, which seems to be the plan all along, that's going to incentivize people who were on Quest 2s and were hesitant to pay more money for a more expensive headset. Quest 3 starts at $500. I pay $650 for mine, so I got the 512 gigabyte version. There's a sizable number of people out there who are value driven. Frankly, that's been the key to the Quest success in the first place because it's cheaper than pretty much any other VR headset on the market. But they're not willing to shell out $500 or $650 for an upgrade to their headset right now when they got their first one for $300. This kind of fills that gap. What this also does is because this has the chipset of the Quest 3, this allows Meta to retire the Quest 2 faster and allows developers to start building standalone VR games that are built specifically for Quest 3 specs, as opposed to what happened with the Quest 2, where most developers and Meta actually required developers to maintain Quest 1 support for an extended period of time. That limited developers of what they could do in terms of like the visuals of games, because a lot of the games, if you look back at that point, were really looking at Quest 1 builds and not Quest 2 builds. I think Meta's learned for this, and they don't want the Quest 2 to be in a similar situation where it starts getting resented because it's holding back the development of VR gaming in general, and more specifically, standalone gaming that's why we're seeing fire sales and the quest 2 now being marked all the way down to 200 dollars instead of 250 like it was selling during the holidays for a while there it was sold down on amazon and on meta's website you actually weren't able to get it i checked this morning before i recorded this podcast and it is now available on meta's website again but ideally meta wants to move on from the last generation as fast as possible I said in the previous podcast, we were talking about the retirement of the Quest 1, that this is like a necessary evil. And even though it sucks because there's more Quest 2 sold out there than Quest 3s or any other VR headset on the market, at some point Meta's pretty much got to rip the bandaid off and just run with it. It's not going to completely close the gap because not every single person that buys a Quest 2 is going to end up buying this. There are some people who might even skip straight on the PC VR and get like a big screen beyond or a Valve Index. And there are some who are just going to run the Quest 2 into the ground and probably never buy another headset again. You're not going to get the 100% adoption rate. That's just not feasible. But if you can get, let's just say, 30 or 40% of the people who still have Quest 2s out there, that's still somewhere in the neighborhood of 1 to 2 million in sales for this new unit. And that would more than justify the cost of manufacturing this. Now, in terms of my thought on this, just looking at the specs, again, this is not a headset that I would buy. Number one, for no lenses. I've been in pancake lenses since I got the Pico 4 about two weeks before I got my Quest 3. And whenever I have to put on my Quest 2, it just really stands out in terms of the small sweet spot and the blurriness. It just kind of drives me insane. Also, something Meta really didn't get credit for is that adjustable facial interface that's on the Quest 3 let you move the headset itself closer or further away from your face. That helped to increase or decrease your FOV. That facial interface was actually designed for people who wear glasses to be able to move the headset away so they could fit their glasses inside the headset. For the Quest 2, there was this thin glasses spacer that added, I think it was like a quarter of an inch or half an inch, something like that, just extending the headset further away from your face. But again, that reduced FOV. Personally, I wasn't a big fan of that. I had people try my Quest 2 who wore glasses and even with the spacer in there, they really couldn't use it. The other major downgrade to this is the three position IPD. I personally have a very large IPD. It's 71.5 and most headsets can't even get that far. But if you're using pancake lenses like on the Pico 4 or the Quest 3 or the Quest Pro, even for people who have really narrow or really wide IPDs, if you put the Quest 3 all the way to the edge, I think the edge is like 68 or something like that. Because the pancake lenses have such edge edge clarity and a really large sweet spot, it's a lot more comfortable for me to stick in that headset longer than say the Quest 2 because I constantly had to adjust it back to a good sweet spot for me. And those three settings were like 62, 65, and 68 for the Quest 2. It looks like the Quest 3S is going to have the same thing. Meaning for someone like me who can't get the IPD dialed exactly in because there's only three settings, that's going to make that headset a bit more uncomfortable. Now, if you're coming from a Quest 2 and that's been the only headset you've had, then you're not used to like automatic IP adjustments or pancake lenses. This headset is going to seem like a major upgrade to you because you're going to get the more powerful chip out of it, especially when games like Batman Arkham Shadows drops later on this year that you can't play on your Quest 2. At that point, it's going to incentivize you to go ahead and do the upgrade. Meta likes to bundle their headsets with games. Most of the time it's been Beat Saber, but when the Quest 3 launched right up until just a few weeks ago, you got a free copy of Asgard's Wrath 2 with it, plus a copy of Asgard's Wrath 1 for PC VR if you had a VR ready PC that could handle that and that file size, I think it was like 140 gigabytes for that game. So we're expecting to see Quest 3S around September 25th or 26th. That's when they promoted the Quest 3, even though it was announced a few months ago at MetaConnect last year. And then the Quest Pro was announced at the MetaConnect the year before that. So I'm expecting the Quest 3S to be kind of like their flagship hardware, along with their Ray-Ban sunglasses for this year's MetaConnect, and for this to go on sale shortly after that. Even if that doesn't exactly line up with Batman Arkham Shadow's release date, 
Asgard's Wrath 2 didn't come out till December, while Crest 3 was available on October 10th, so we still had to wait two months to play the free game that we got with our new headset. So while I can see Meta taking the easy way out and going with either Beat Saber or like a one month trial subscription to Quest Plus, if they were to bundle the 3S with something like Batman, that would show that Meta's trying to get the Quest 2 out of the market so they could push forward with all their mixed reality stuff that they're pushing really hard right now, and the more high fidelity experiences that their nine studios can start building for Quest 3. I should point out that this isn't unprecedented in the gaming world because people are saying this doesn't make any sense. Just take it out of VR for a second. If you look at the Nintendo Switch, now you have the base Nintendo Switch and you have the Nintendo Switch OLED and you have the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is purely handheld. You can't detach the Joy-Cons from that and you can't dock it to play it on the TV. It's purely a handheld device. The PlayStation 4 had a PlayStation Slim model that came out shortly after with like quieter fans and a much lower profile setup. The PlayStation 5 is rumored to have a PlayStation 5 Slim version coming out later on this year, if not early 2025. And even if you bring it back to VR circles, you got something like the Pimax Crystal. The Pimax Crystal launched last year as Pimax's latest high-end PC VR headset. Earlier this year, they announced that they're going to be releasing several other SKUs in the Pimax Crystal line. You got the Pimax Crystal Lite that's going to be just like a base level PC VR headset with some downgraded specs. You could buy that one. I'm looking at Pimax's website right now. If you just wanted their regular track controllers, you get that for between $700 to $900. If you already have your own base stations because you own the Valve Index and Valve Knuckles, then you could buy a lighthouse with a faceplate for again around the same price, $700 to $900. Or if you just want the headset by yourself, it's about $100 cheaper. This is a much stripped down version of the Pimax Crystal. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but the Pimax Crystal is running for over $1,500 minus a sale that just happened recently. So this is Pimax trying to dip into like the lower end PC VR community where really you've got like Quest headsets, Pico headsets, and a DPVR E4. The Vibexr Elite, the other standalone headset with PC VR capability is over $1,000. So Pimax is already trying to cut into that. If you look at other PCVR headsets on the market, the Valve Index still retails for $1,000. Varro's headsets are always over $1,000. Some of them are upwards of two or three or $4,000. On top of the Pimax Crystal Lite, you've also got the Pimax Crystal Super. This one itself, the Super line, actually has three different SKUs available with it. You got the Crystal Super Micro OLED for $2,000, and you have the Pimax Crystal Super Bundle for $2,400. Then you had the Somnium VR1. I did a whole podcast about this headset a few weeks ago. Go back and check that out. You got the classic version of that. That's just a headset, no controllers or anything for 1,900 euros. That's about $2,000. Then you got the Striker Edition that comes with hand tracking for $400 more. The version with eye tracking is $600 more. With eye tracking and hand tracking is $1,000 more at 2,900 euros. If you want mixed reality, now you're up to 3,100. If you want the ultimate edition with eye tracking, hand tracking, and mixed reality, you're playing 3,500 euros. And if you want the version that's translucent, that's $4,000. On top of that, we got Apple Vision Pro saying that they're gonna release a lighter version of their headset sometime in like 2025 or 2026. The Vision Pro currently retails for $3,500. This new lighter version is gonna be somewhere between 1,500 to 2,000. And then you got Pico who released the Pico 4 about two years ago now. Now being rumored to be launching the Pico 4S. Here's another leak from Luna. Just looking at the specs, I'll put this up on the screen for those watching visually. The Pico 4S is not going to be a downgraded version of the Pico 4. It'll be an upgraded version, which with the S in there, that's going to be confusing for consumers, but whatever, dueling companies. This one's going to have the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chip, the same one that's in the Quest 3 with 12 gigs of RAM. Dual LCDs at 2160 by 2160 per eye. 90 hertz refresh rate, so it can't get to 120. Pancake lenses with motorized IPD, IED adjustment, and a set of controllers without range, just like the Quest 3 controllers. This one will also have a depth sensor and full color pass through. I have a Pico 4 and the mixed reality in that is not great because it does not have a depth sensor. So like your hands are way out of scale if you look at your hands in the headset versus what your hands do. Everything just looks bigger and warped. Quest 3 has some warping too. Some of the OS stuff worked a lot of that out. It looks a lot better now than it did when it first launched, but the warping is still there. The depth sensor for the Pico 4S will help a lot with that warping that was on the Pico 4 and probably make that a better mixed reality experience. So now within the next year, we're looking at five different companies, Meta, Pico, Pimax, Somnium, and Apple, all gonna have different versions of their current generation headsets on the market so people have options. And basically we as consumers are gonna win for that if we, and basically, and basically that means we as consumers are gonna win for that. We're not locked into any one option if we wanna stay in a certain ecosystem or on a certain platform. Now we have different options that all kinds of different price ranges and really everyone wins in that scenario. Like I said on the previous podcast, I don't plan on picking up a Quest 3 S for myself, but that's definitely something I can see giving to like a relative as a gift because I'm not gonna give a relative a $500 Quest 3. I ain't got that kind of money. 
actually bought my daughter used Quest 2 for her birthday last year. But when I had her try my Quest 3 and had her play First Encounter, she fell in love with that game and played it until my battery died. And then was really bummed to find out it's not on her Quest 2. So for people like me, for parents who are looking to get a headset for their kids and don't really feel great about that price range, or for someone just in general that does feel great about that price range, it's just great to have all these options from all these different companies. That's a wrap of this episode. Live Open Daily comes to you five times a week. I try to do it on separate days. Sometimes like editing kind of runs into each other and I might have to release two on the same day. But you will get five podcasts a week on weeks that aren't major holidays here in the States. Also check out my other podcast, the XR Remix Podcast, and check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash liveopenmic. I stream VR there a few days a week. 